Welcome to the video covering the bunkering function. The bunkering department is responsible for the optimal bunker planning and procurement of the fleet in collaboration with the operations department. The target is to supply bunkers at ports with no delay or route deviation at the lowest possible price and with the best possible quality. Let's deep dive into the bunkering ecosystem. Vessels consume three main fuels. One, HSFO, high sulfur fuel oil, with 3.5% sulfur is used only by scrubber-fitted vessels following IMO 2020 regulation. Scrubbers remove particulate harmful exhaust components such as sulfur oxides, SOx, and nitrogen oxides, NOx, generated in marine engines. 2. VLSFO, very low sulfur fuel oil, with 0.5% sulfur is used by vessels that do not have scrubbers installed. 3. MGO, marine gas oil, with only 0.1% sulfur is used by all vessels within the Sulfur Emission Controls Area, SICA, mainly in North America, Northern Europe, China, and in Mediterranean ports. Bunkering cost represents the largest expense element of a voyage. Managing bunker costs efficiently plays a significant role in commercial performance. Fuel prices may vary materially by fuel type and location. Bunkering operations are available in most of the main load and discharge ports. The most common and price-attractive bunkering destinations are Singapore, Fujairah, Malta, Rotterdam, ports in the Baltic Sea, and U.S. Gulf. Longer voyages usually involve bunkering also in Panama, Gibraltar, West Africa, Port Elizabeth, or North China, South Korea range. The vessel consumption depends on technical factors such as year and country built and varies among the five key voyage stages. The daily bunker consumptions ranked from the highest to lowest are laden steaming, ballast steaming, discharge operation, load operation, and idle. Additional bunkers are consumed for side operations such as tank cleaning and cargo heating. For all vessel classes, steaming consumption is exponentially related to speed. All vessels have segregate fuel tanks. Segregation has to do with the different fuel types and also with different stems. For example, it is important to load every new fuel stem on a separate fuel tank, even if this is of the same type with fuel contained in another tank. The bunkering department is in close cooperation with the operations and chartering teams for planning purposes. At the pre-fixing stage, the operator requests from the captain the bunker's stowage plan. The bunker's stowage plan informs on the expected bunkers remaining on board ROBs, and the maximum safe capacity per tank. As a result, the maximum bunkers that the vessel can lift in the next bunkering can be calculated. After receiving the bunker's stowage plan, the operator estimates the bunkers required based on the vessel's daily consumption profile and the estimated duration for the intended voyage. For example, a vessel that burns 25 metric tons per day when in ballast condition at 12 knots is expected to consume 100 metric tons in this leg, which will last four days. Following the same calculation for the rest of the voyage stages, the estimated total bunkers are 500 metric tons. The operator takes into account a safety margin of around 200 metric tons, which results in an overall consumption for the example voyage of around 700 metric tons. If ROBs based on the provided bunker stowage plan are not sufficient, the operator should coordinate with the chartering and bunkering teams for bunker supply. At the same time, the bunkering officer checks the position and remaining bunkers of the fleet on a daily basis, but also monitors the prices at major ports to advise on proper planning and ensure smooth deliveries. The bunker prices at each port are taken into consideration to decide on next bunkering operations. For example, if the vessel is close to an opportunity port which offers low bunker prices, she could lift maximum quantities. In case there are strict cargo requirements, for example, maximizing cargo quantity, the vessel may lift sufficient bunkers to execute the voyage and then lift bunkers again at discharge port at any cost. Once the bunkering port is decided, the bunkering officer communicates with physical suppliers or traders and brokers and negotiates prices and additional expenses. Before fixing the stem, the Certificate of Quality COQ, of the fuel to be lifted should be available and sent to owners for approval. Once the stem is fixed, the bunkering officer receives a stem confirmation with details on the quantity and grade to be lifted, the breakdown of bunkering expenses such as barges and harbor fees. Once the stem is delivered, the supplier shares the bunker delivery note BDN, with the exact metric tons lifted. 
The bunkering department aims to optimally plan bunker procurements, avoid risks, delays, and extra costs, ensure high fuel quality, and react to specific bunker requirements also related to the Voyage Charter Party. This brings us to the end of the video on bunkering.